Hi, I'm Samina Karim. I'm here to talk to you today about business reconfiguration. Along with my colleague Laurence Capron, we're delighted to bring you this virtual special issue that is being sponsored by the Strategic Management Society Journals. It's now well established in the strategy literature that firms grow successfully and survive if they're able to alter their resource base on an ongoing basis. This changing of a firm's resource base is what we refer to as reconfiguration. Scholars have referred to reconfiguration as the third leg of the dynamic capabilities triad. This triad that also involves sensing and seizing capabilities is what Thies describes as the micro foundations of dynamic capabilities. So what is reconfiguration? We define reconfiguration as a dynamic capability encompassing the corporate development activities in which firms engage to align resources with the decision to expand, meaning to do more, contract, meaning do less, or innovate, meaning do something new. A variety of names have been given to such activities, including resource redeployment, knowledge sourcing and grafting, resource recombination, corporate restructuring, business unit reorganization, and patching, to name just a few. While these terms aptly describe firms' attempts to alter their resource base and remap businesses to changing market opportunities, each has particular nuances. Collectively, we refer to these activities as reconfiguration. We adopt a broad definition of reconfiguration that refers to firms adding to their current stock of resources, activities, and business units, redeploying or recombining what is within this stock, or divesting and removing from this stock. For this virtual special issue, we scoured the SMS journals over the last 35 years to bring together seminal studies which collectively advance our understanding of the reconfiguration phenomenon. They vary in methodologies, as well as in the levels of analysis, ranging from individuals, resources and units within a firm, and those between firms. Many of the papers included in this issue are frequently cited and have had a major impact on the reconfiguration stream of research, and more generally in the field of strategy. Some of the more recent papers have been chosen because we expect them to be very influential in the near future. In reviewing the papers, we identified four themes. Reconfiguration for value creation, for growth strategies, for retrenchment strategies, and more specifically for international environments. Together, the papers have a shared understanding of reconfiguration as a crucial process underlying firms' expansion, contraction, and innovation as they seek to improve performance and secure competitive advantage. When read as a cohesive collection, we're able to develop an organizing framework from the studies that inform us about the antecedents to reconfiguration, details about reconfiguration processes, and consequential outcomes of these reconfigurations. The papers reveal that drivers of reconfiguration include the desire to expand or contract in scope, to improve innovation, and to deal with institutional frictions. The processes surrounding reconfiguration range from internal recombination to redeployment between acquirers and targets, and significant restructuring and retrenchment efforts. Finally, we learned that value may be created from reconfiguration in the form of efficiencies from scope economies, renewal of capabilities, and mitigating frictions in the external environment. This value creation is enabled by a variety of sources, including the nature of some resources as being scale-free, redeployable, and modular. It also helps to have knowledge retained within the firm and firm-specific investments made in employees. By pulling these papers together into this virtual special issue, we hope to expand their influence and hope that the issue serves as a good resource for those studying firm evolution and renewal. We also hope to encourage scholars in the field to tackle reconfiguration issues that are crucial for both academics and practitioners, and that the studies presented here will pave the way for further research in this important area.